last story. Oh. It's now time for us to do a summary on the final story in Lally's game besides the epilogue. The epilogue summary should be out tomorrow, but today we're doing a summary on Under Construction. Before reading this story, I heard it was really weird, but I guess we'll see really just how weird it can get. I do hope that the story ends up being good though. We'll see. So, so now, let's get started with Under Construction. The story begins with our main character Maya at Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Box eating pizza with her friends Jackson and Noelle. Tomorrow was Maya's birthday and she was turning 16 but she was celebrating her birthday with her friends today. Noelle had said that she didn't expect this place to be that cool but it did end up being pretty cool and Jackson said he was excited to try a VR booth Then Maya replied saying AR first. Funny cause those are FNAF games. <laughs> the whole Pizza Box was incredibly loud, so much so that they could barely hear themselves laughing. Interesting news that there's a roller coaster in the Pizza Plex and a bunch of other stuff that didn't appear in Security Breach. And in the story, it makes it's made clear that this is actually taking place only a few days after the Pizza Plex actually opened. So that means that this is, um, well, obviously before the events of Security Breach, since the Security Breach, the Pizza Plex had been open for five years. It's also said that Maya has a sister named Elena, who would have hated the Pizza Plex because she wouldn't like the extreme volume and bright colors and stuff. So Maya jokes with her friends that just because she turned 16 before them, they don't need to hate on her, to which Jackson responded saying, age is just a thought that depends on the subject's mind. Noelle groaned and suggested leaving science in science, cla science class, but Maya liked science despite not always understanding it, and she loved to grow things. Noelle countered Jackson, saying that Maya has been alive for 16 years, so it doesn't matter what her mind thinks, and Jackson says that he read an article last night about something called quantum immortality, a theory saying that humans never really die. Noelle claimed that the idea of immortality was stupid, and Jackson was basically saying that when her uncle, who she was really close to, died a few weeks ago, she didn't really, he didn't really die. Apparently, Jackson wasn't great with understanding emotions, so he kind of just went on. But then after that, they went to the VR booth first, and Jackson suggested they go on the Fast Freddy, which was a roller coaster, but Maya insisted they go to the AR booth. Maya originally didn't want to spend her birthday at the Pizza Plex, but she knew that Fazbear Entertainment knew how to make money. Before the Pizza Plex opened, Fazbear Entertainment had sold thousands of hologram projectors, and the first thing they projected was Glamrock Freddy advertising the Pizza Plex. Maya was skeptical at first, but she ultimately decided to go when Jackson told her about the AR booth, which made it seem like everyone at the Pizza Plex was focused on you for your birthday. It's also said that there's a blacklight area in the Pizza Plex for, you, for the younger kids, and I wonder if this is where Lally's game was, since that was said to be in a blacklight arena. Anyways, Maya was really excited to go to the AR booth, which was called The World Celebrates You. But when she got there, it was closed and under construction. Roll credits, <laughs> but I'm just kidding. But, uh, she was really upset about that because she was really looking forward to it. That's basically the only reason she came here. But Noelle told her that it would be okay because it's not like they would run out of things to do in the Pizza Plex. But then Maya looked around, saw no one was looking at them, and dove under the tape. There were a bunch of cameras around and Maya knew that she would probably get caught, but she didn't really care. She asked her friends if they were coming with her and Jackson didn't, didn't really care, he was fine with going. So Maya went in and both her friends ended up following. She walked into the actual AR booth and Jackson was able to turn it on. The glass around the booth disappeared and Maya was able to see into the main atrium and she could see everyone in there had stopped to celebrate her. She knew it was fake obviously, but to her it was still awesome. She even saw people she knew, basically all her family and friends were there. My question is, were they all in the Pizza Plex? Did literally all of them show up for my, Maya's birthday party? No, they didn't, because it wasn't Maya's birthday party. This was the day before her birthday. So was it just her imagination, or is the AR booth psychic or something? I'll talk about that a little bit at the end, though. Freddy and the band also played a revamped version of the Happy Birthday song, and after she blew out the AR candle, she and Jackson danced together. It's said that Maya thinks of J Jackson more, more like a brother, but they danced well together, so that's what they did. Maya felt like she was really in it. it, it really felt real to her, like she even ate the cake and it tasted great. She had a great time in the AR booth and it was the best party she'd ever had, even though it wasn't real. After going in the AR booth, she really didn't care what they did now, so they went to the roller coaster since the pizza box was only three stories, and they didn't think it could be all that s scary because of that, but it ended up being pretty scary. Interestingly, Foxy was actually part of the ride, so I wonder if this roller coaster could be related partially to Pirate Ride. Anyway, after the roller coaster, we cut to Maya back at home. She didn't tell her parents about the AR party because she didn't want her parents to think she didn't appreciate the parties they had for her. 
Maya's dad asked if they went on the roller coaster and Maya showed them the video of, of them on it. Maya went up to bed since she was already really tired and she went upstairs to her and her sister's room and flopped onto the bed, accidentally waking up Elena, who had been asleep. Maya went and laid down next to her sister, telling her that she already had her big birthday party and stuff. And then Elena was like, you're weird and stuff. And they, she said, you're weird. Yeah, whatever. The, the next day, Maya, Maya's family threw her a birthday party like they always did in front of their in front of their house with her with her family and friends. It was really different from the party Maya had at the Pizzaplex. The only similarity was that her family and friends were all there. About seven pages go by with information about Maya's family and her birthday party, but none of that is really important. Uh, strangely though, she had a head she'd had a headache for a minute during her party, and it came back before going to bed. She thought at first that it might have had something to do with the AR party, but she quickly dismissed it and thought it was just a coincidence. But a long time passed with headaches recurring every so often, but she never really told any of anyone because at the time the AR booth was closed. So if the AR party had done some kind of nerve damage to her, she didn't really have the right to complain because she was the one who chose to go into the restricted area. It was her fault anyway. Also, when I say a long time passed, I mean a full year goes by, and during that year Maya's grandmother unfortunately was diagnosed with breast cancer. Maya's 17th birthday was spent saying goodbye to her grandma. Only a few days after that, Maya's grandfather was diagnosed with cancer in his brain. Before he had passed, Maya's other grandfather was diagnosed too. Maya was under understandably incredibly sad. She had lost two of her grandparents and she was going to lose another. Elena was on hers and Maya's computer one night doing research on the causes of cancer, and Maya looked over her shoulder. It shifted from an article to the words, page under construction. Elena researched the causes of cancer every night for a few days, and Maya spent her nights reading to her grandfathers before they eventually passed. Just days after, Maya's other grandmother died too. Even her neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Lambert, got cancer and died too. And more of their neighbors. The family of people at Maya's school, even Jackson's mom, her aunts and her uncle, some of her older cousins, so many people close to her had been getting cancer. And after Jackson told Maya and Noel about his mom getting cancer, he asked the other two if they wanted to go to the Pizza Plex that weekend as if nothing was wrong, and Maya kind of freaked out because her friends were just acting like everything was normal. And they said everything was normal, but Maya was convinced that something had been wrong because of how many people had been getting cancer. When she told them that, Jackson said that the can that cancer sucked, but there wasn't anything abnormal about it. Maya just left after that. She didn't want to hang out with her friends if they thought that way about everything going on. Over the next few weeks, she saw them a lot less. They ended up getting jobs over the summer, but Maya hadn't had time for, for a job because she had been helping her cousins, aunts, uncles, and her neighbors. Shortly before the beginning of school, she had finally gotten some good news that her favorite teacher named Mrs. Carpenter had had a baby. My, Maya's dad had now gotten cancer and Maya had to do pretty much everything around the house because her mom was busy taking care of her dad, so Noelle was helping Maya with laundry and she told her that she had heard about Mrs. Carpenter's baby because when she was with her mom in the hospital she often got bored and went to look at, at babies. Maya found it really weird the way that Noelle talked about her mom's condition, getting bored of sitting with her. It's almost as if everyone around Maya had been possessed and Maya was the only one thinking straight. But Maya wanted to focus on the positive, so she just kind of ignored Noelle just brushing off her mom's condition, and they both went to ro and rode their bikes to Mrs. Carpenter's house to visit and see how she and her baby were doing. When they got to Mrs. Carpenter's house, she invited them inside. Inside the house didn't smell like anything Maya had expected. She expected it to smell like dirty diapers and milk and stuff, but it smelled like freshly brewed coffee. Mrs. Carpenter let Maya hold her baby, and when Maya held her, the baby's name was Ce Cecilia, by the way. She didn't smell anything from the baby, which was weird. Then when she looked at the baby, she saw that the baby literally had no face. The baby was like Slenderman. Noelle was looking at the baby too, and she didn't seem to react to the Slenderman baby. Maya actually almost dropped the thing she wasn't sure was a baby, and she moved the blanket so she could see the whole thing and it was completely smooth and featureless. She thought the baby looked like a jelly-filled, lifeless ragdoll. A mannequin baby with translucent skin. This was when I realized why everyone has been saying this story was weird. Literally what is happening. Maya could see things under the skin that looked like veins, but otherwise the filling of the baby was completely translucent. Con translucent? Translucent. <laughs> really like jelly. Maya insisted they leave, and when they got outside, Maya almost threw up. She asked if, she, if Noelle had seen that thing, and Noelle was confused and asked if she was talking about the cute baby Cecilia. Very cute baby. <laughs> Later, Maya convinced herself that she had just imagined, imagined the whole thing, but she couldn't get the image out of her head. At dinner that night, her parents calmly gave her the news that her mom now had cancer. 
They didn't seem to care very much as they had enough money to get through school and stuff and the house was paid for. Elena didn't seem to care very much either. Maya had to just get up and throw up. Also, that was also partially because the the rolls that they were having for dinner reminded her of the jelly baby. <laughs> now she wondered to herself if she had cancer too, and her mom took her to the hospital to test her that the next day, and she didn't have cancer. But she couldn't stop watching the news and seeing how many people were being diagnosed with cancer, like 300,000 people in each country. Also, am I the only one who finds it funny that there's a character named Mrs. Carpenter in a story called Under Construction? Speaking of, Cecilia had, has been keeping Maya up recently, and a few days after seeing her, she went around a sign saying sidewalk under construction, and she saw Mrs. Carpenter. It was now that I realized what was going on, but I won't spoil it yet. When she saw Mrs. Carpenter, she was getting into her car. Next to her, on the passenger seat, was a gooey blob four times bigger than Cecilia had been just two days before, and she had, and she had been seeing more of them everywhere. By Christmas, Maya's whole family was sick. Literally every single person she knew was either sick or dead. Noel and Jackson were dying too, and Eleanor was dying too. The goo blobs were on every street corner, everywhere she went now. Maya had to take care of everyone who wasn't sick. Her pastor came and visited her at Christmas, and he luckily wasn't dead yet, but Maya could tell he was sick too. He came inside and sang Christmas carols with Maya's parents, and Maya left and went to make Elena a peanut butter sandwich. And Pastor Ben came in, and Maya asked him why everyone was dying. He said that it's not for us to question why we are, why as we are given each day to live and not to question. Maya then asked what was with the jelly children, and <laughs> Pastor Ben said that all life is sacred in spite of appearance. But Maya still knew something was wrong especially when Pastor Ben revealed that he baptized the jelly children too. Pastor Ben was hungry, so Maya gave him the sandwich that she was making for Elena, and before he ate it, he told her that although people were dying, children were being born at a very high rate, and they were growing from, from infants to adults in, rather, in days rather than years. Maya was so shocked as to how everyone thought it was all normal. Maya went outside into the night, and she thought to herself about what was going on, and she remembered it all started going wrong the, at, after the AR party at the Pizzaplex. She wondered if maybe that had something to do with it. The jelly things at this point were everywhere, blocking sidewalks and stores, and they inexplicably grew and multiplied on their own. One day on her way to Jackson's house, she saw a small jelly kid just come out of a bigger one. Maya didn't even go to school anymore because only a few classes were left to go to, and no one seemed to care about everyone dying. Maya one day asked Jackson if he thought the Jelly Kids were strange, and he didn't seem to care one bit. That day, when she went back home, her house was basically covered in jelly blobs, but when she went inside, she found her parents were dead. But she still had to take care of her cousins, who she had moved to her house. She took care of them and then found that Elena, Elena's IV bag was empty, and there wasn't one to replace it with. Since there were too many people sick, there were dispensaries in every town with supplies for people with cancer. Maya drove to, the, to one in her town, but when she was almost there, her road was blocked by a road under construction sign. That's when she finally questioned why there were so many under construction signs everywhere. She stopped and thought about the other ones she's seen, first thinking of the one in the Pizzaplex at the AR booth. So Maya continued to the dispensary and she grabbed the supplies she needed. She drove to her old neighbor's house to check on their son Donnie, the only living person left in the family. She thought about her memories of being in this house and it felt like that had all just been a parallel reality. Then she stopped. What if this was a parallel reality? What if she had still been in the AR booth? She remembered her AR party and the fact that it, it really felt real, so who's to say that this was? Suddenly she heard Donnie fall out of bed and so she went up to help him and he pointed her to a package on it on his shelf it was a decorated vase that he had made for her birthday that he forgot about because of Maya's grandma when Maya got it Donnie closed his eyes if he was satisfied now that she had it and then Maya left to go check on her other neighbors kids and then go back home to to help her sister and her cousins as she was leaving, she noticed one of her older neighbors, Mr. Vance, watching her. He was an asshole and kicked his dog before all this started, and Maya had told Elena that he deserved cancer more than her, her, their grandma. And Maya now was surprised to see that he was still alive. Maya couldn't go to the other neighbor's house because there was no way in, it was completely blocked off by the jelly blobs, so she went back home. When she got there, she hugged her cousin April, and while she was doing that, her other cousin Axel had died. On her way to Elena's room, Maya fell to the floor. She couldn't keep taking care of everyone. Everyone besides her was going to die anyway, there was no point in taking care of everyone. 
At this point, Maya had no idea why she was in the center of everything, why everyone was dying except her. She thought maybe she still was in the AR booth, but she didn't know how or why any of this would be happening in augmented reality. But she still knew that even if Maya was going to die, she deserved to at least be comfortable. She went into Elena's room and saw out, and saw out the window that the jelly things were piling up and pressing against the window. Maya went over to Elena and found that she was still alive but barely. Maya attached an IV back to Elena's drip despite knowing it was pointless, but then suddenly the window behind her cracked. The jelly things were now pouring into the house. Maya tried to bring Elena with her away from the jelly blobs, but she realized that Elena had died. Maya ran. She needed to get to the garage since there were no windows to get through and the garage door and main door were thick enough that it would take a lot of pressure for the blobs to come into the garage. Maya figured that was her safest bet. But when she made it to the garage, she realized that it had been a mistake. She had forgotten to close the garage door before, so now it was full of the jelly blobs. And then they engulfed her. It felt disgusting. And it was like they were surrounding her as if she was the last thing they needed for some reason. They like merged with her. They filled her nose and mouth. She expected to suffocate. She expected to die. But she didn't. And that's where the story ends. So after reading this story, I have one question. What in the actual f When people told me this story was would be weird, I expected like Fazgu levels of weird, and it was kind of similar to Fazgu in some way, in some ways, but this was like beyond weird. This was like the strangest thing that we have ever gotten out of FNAF. Weirder than Fetus Trap and Mpreg and stuff. <laughs> like, I have a theory about what happens in the story, but as for what, if anything, this is trying to tell us about the lore, I have absolutely zero idea. But as for what happens in the story, I think it's clear that she still is in the AR reality, and there's a few things throughout the story that show this too. First off, Maya sees the phrase under construction in random places, despite it making sometimes not even making sense to use that phrase, like page under construction that doesn't make sense. Also weirdly, at the beginning of the story, Maya sees her family and neighbors in the crowd at the pizza place when, when in the AR party, despite them not actually being there, almost like the AR read her mind. But when she was in the AR party, she felt like she was actually in it, which is mentioned later. There's a, distinct, there's a distinct part where it switches from her knowing it wasn't real to it actually starting to feel real. Maybe that's, maybe that's like why she was trapped in here. Like maybe she died while she was in the AR party and like maybe it like maybe when it was under construction it wasn't finished yet so it like shocked her or something and that killed her and then her consciousness was just sucked into it. After that everyone started acting weird except her like she's the only one who thinks something is wrong. So yeah, it seems like she either died and became trapped in the AR reality, like Vanessa when she dies in Security Breach if she's not set free, or she just never got out of the AR reality and her life just kind of phased into it. I think it makes more sense for her to have died though, because how could she really live life in a glass bubble? How would she move around? And it makes more sense if she died and got stuck in it, because then she'd be part of that reality, so there wouldn't be a limit to how far she could go, how far she could move. At the beginning, Jackson also talks about the concept of quantum immortality, a theory that states that after we die, we're not technically dead. And we would know because no living people have died, obviously, so they don't know what death is like. And since quantum immortality isn't mentioned again, it seems like it's supposed to be foreshadowing what happens later on. Overall, this story was very odd. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't that great either. But what do you guys think? Did you enjoy the story? And let me know in the comments what you did think about the story. And if you did enjoy this video, then please do leave a like and subscribe if you want to. Make sure you stay tuned for my summary of the first epilogue, which will be out tomorrow. But that's all for this video, so we'll see you all tomorrow for that epilogue summary. Uh. <laughs> Ow.